Hi, Josh Zaring from J Zaring Studios. Today I'm going to quickly show you how I cut out a person from a green screen uh, portrait and uh, I'm going to be using Topaz Remask but the real thing is uh, of this tutorial is how to get rid of that extra green, the splash. Um, the portrait you're about to see, I was probably about eight feet away from the green screen with a backlight and it's still, sometimes a backlight helps a little, but it's still got a lot of green on my face. So we're just gonna run down through that. I'm gonna try to do this as quickly and as easily as possible. I'm gonna go, go with this one here. And you don't usually see it too much until you actually have cut the image out and then you see like right here there's some green on my face. But I'm gonna open up. We got a filter, Topaz Labs, Topaz Remask. And you can actually do this using a large number of tools built into Photoshop. <clears throat> this is just a little bit faster and definitely a lot easier. And if you have this plugin, this is what I do. I flood the whole image and then I go to my green with my brush. I'm going to get the tablet going here. And uh, since all the important parts are already selected by blue, then you just roughly go around here where uh, where it's not. So you don't have to go right along the edge. Like that's, this is why I like using this. And while I do this, I just like explain <laughs> just a recommendation on my part here. This is, I did these for thumbnails and stuff like that, just random stuff. Um, I normally use a gray backdrop. I'm going to fill this in here a gray backdrop to cut things out and the reason being is because there's no spill. Gray is a lot easier to cut out uh, when you're when you know you're going to intentionally be cutting something out. Obviously I'm not going to be using this wrinkly green screen for anything important so I'm going to be cutting it out but the issue is green screening is great for video and blue screen but because it allows you to chroma key and when you chroma key out of a video it removes the background um, video programs seem to do a much nicer job at it uh, you will always have this green tint and there's a lot of software out there to remove that um, I'm my thing is going to show you how to manually remove that you just using Photoshop paint in my masking out layer here and again this is another quick and dirty thing because filling it with the blue, instead of outlining with the blue, blue is uh, the, your edges, you're marking your edges. And that means you don't have to tediously mask them thing, things out. And right now I'm going to use the blue brush for this right here. Just that. Okay, now compute mask. That looks fairly decent. Um, there's something right over here. Something right over here. And a very important thing, I use, I normally crank recovery the whole way up, right? I normally mask strength the whole way up, and it's usually good to see it here. So there's not as many what we call halos, there's not as many extras in there, and what you keep is this. And I see, actually, that's not bad. And it did remove a lot of the green. You can also use desaturation for the edging. I'm not seeing anything out of place here. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. OK, now Topaz automatically creates your mask that you would normally create in Photoshop. Like I said, it's not about, it's not about this plugin. It's about what happens when you're done, especially with bright backgrounds that you want to cut out. It's spilling the skin. So here we go. 
now you can see the green. Now that the background's out, you can see where the green shouldn't be. And I could have spent a little more time in this area here, but since the edges of my facial hair are slightly out of focus, that would have been a real, real issue there anyway. So what I have, and I'll show you what it is, is just a action I created called Green Remove. And I'm gonna play that. And it gives me my gray background so I can really see the green and removes green three times. It's a little extreme that you have to do this and sometimes I actually duplicate this. Uh, so what it is is you go in the hue saturation control and hit green and you can see I have it pulled all the way down here and that's actually it's done three times because uh, for some reason it's just really hard to get rid of and this is probably one of the easiest ways to re remove it. So I'm going to zoom in and I have a layer called skin painting and it's on layer blending mode hue. I select that layer, I'm on that layer, and I select the color of the skin by pressing alt and click with the paintbrush tool. So then I go down through here and you can see exactly what's going on here. It's using my skin tone to paint over the green. And sometimes during the facial hair part you have to select facial hair color like be black or dark brown almost. But here that's not really happening. Right right here I'm gonna I'm gonna sample this. Actually sample that. And you can see it's like a really, really dark, almost black, but brown, really, really dark brown. And now you can go around the ears and get the ears the right color. You can see I have kind of a, a weird edge there that I should have probably softened a little bit. And down here on my neck, you can definitely see that. That's not skin tone. It's basically the yellow skin tone of my face, my skin mixing with the green and making this gnarly color here. So I'm gonna sample over here where it's a little light and try that out here. And that's obviously not going to work. So I'm gonna try and select this here, darker spot of my face and paint over this. Let's see what that looks like. Now another thing you can do is of course, even, even though this is black, it did spill. So I'm just, I just select that. And basically what that's doing, since I selected a, a gradient of black, uh, it's like a lighter gray. Um, what it, it's basically doing is desaturating and that's fine because it's black, it's a black shirt. So here's the before. And I'm just gonna zoom in on that. That's the before. This is the after. Even down along here through my hair, it's gone. And now I see a couple spots here that I can I can fix also. And right here I'm gonna select a darker spot. Go along that a little bit. And um, the more you do this, uh, the more you complete, the more you notice green, the green tint on your on a person's skin and that's good because you're removing it and then you look over here, oh yeah it's over here too and these are so it's such a light green that you don't notice it at first with your with your ordinary human eyes and then once you start removing it anything that's even remotely green sticks out like a sore thumb so you can just remove it and that's uh that's all of it that's it there but basically what we have here my action i'm going to cl close it this is the action folder here. Skin painting, it's just a blank layer uh, and put in, in the uh, layer mode hue and you use your brush with it. That's basically, you sam sample skin color, hair color, and you use a brush with it. Hue saturation, I already went over that and that's basically done the same exact thing three times. So in the action, when I'm recording the action, I just 
do this, and then you can see it says copy one, copy two. I'll just copy it twice. So uh, I hope that's, that helps you in some way. I know I've been using Photoshop since the 90s, and I know, I know how far it's come, but this has always been like one of the most requested tasks, like how do you do this and get, it, get the edges to look right, especially hair. You can see in my hair how I usually have it. I have a hat on today. How my hair usually is, that's the biggest pain uh, cutting an image out. And this actually was easy when you get an image where there's an actual background, where there's something busy going on in the background. Um, the less, the, the, the more depth of field you had in that photo, the harder it's going to be. Uh, if you blur it out, if you know you're going to cut it out, if you blur it out by using an uh, open aperture like 1.4, 1.8, and you're close to your subject, it's a little bit easier to cut it out, but it's still ridiculously challenging in the hair, it, as, unless they slick their hair and there's nothing sticking up. But like some, a woman with a perm or a guy like me that decides to stick it up in the air, uh, this right here, that's, that's Topaz does an excellent job. Remask does an excellent job on that. I basically saved, a, probably about 20, 30 minutes by using the Topaz remask. Uh, in another video, I'll show you the, the hard way to do it, uh, the cheap way to do it. Uh, but for now, keep creating and keep it awesome. Thanks for watching and please subscribe. <laughs>